Seems ATGMs just never go away causing their controversy. This video, we're gonna look at the truth behind the ATGM. Yeah, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz. And before we start, don't forget, you know, I've got a great gold giveaway. That's it for grabs. Admittedly, it doesn't kick in until I get to 5k subs, but go and check it out. Anyway, ATGMs. Wowzers, what can I say? Wargaming and Ring Survey at the moment. It seems that the issue of ATGMs just will not die down. And why is that? Wow, it's pretty straightforward, to be perfectly honest with you. ATGMs have changed the parameters of the game massively. And I mean massively. So, until the introduction of ATGMs, the game was a pretty simple concept. It really, really was. I mean, it was pretty straightforward. That all changed when these tanks were introduced. Let's have a look at that. Let's see what this simple concept was. I mean, it was basically to go out and shoot tanks. And to an extent, there was a level playing field with regard to what was available. And I'll show you what I mean. So there are 423 tanks in the game. 215 tanks are researchable, 118 are premium, and 90 tanks are collectors. That makes 423. Out of that 423, 421, you have to aim at the target with the gun. You have to wait for the aim reticle to come down, and then you have to shoot. That's 99.6% of the game requires that. That means 0.4% of the game, namely the T92 and the AMX 551 Sheridan, do not require that. That's a big step change. When you have virtually all the tanks in the game, and until the introduction of these tanks, 100% of the tanks in the game requiring you to aim at the target you're going to shoot at wait for your aiming cycle to come down and then shoot that's level now you've got tanks that can actually do that without a aiming b waiting for the aiming reticle to come down or c ever having to expose themselves that is a massive change it's huge i mean it really is huge and people just aren't getting this now, I'm not a massive fan of missile tanks. I think they bring a bit of fun to the game. Yes, of course I do. I think they're entertaining. I think all of that. But, for gameplay, no. They spoil the game. And they spoil the game because they bring something that the game was never intended to have. Now, I've just put four tanks together here. The T-92, the Sheridan, the Camp 70, and the Object 252U. Now, look at the stats. I mean, the Sheridan and the T92 are light tanks. Yet, hands down, they're both better than the Camp 70, which is a heavy tank, and the Object 252U. And the T92, okay, is a tier nine, but it plays against the Object 252U and the Camp 70. The Sheridan's only ever gonna play against the Camp 70, but these are light tanks. And this is the thing about Blitz. Blitz had a basic meta, a basic understanding, a basic principle. And that basic principle was as follows, in its very basic form. Kill all the other tanks or take the base. In order to kill all the other tanks, you had to point your gun at them, pull the trigger and hit them for as much damage as possible. Inside that basic premise, there were subdivisions of the basics where the tanks came into different classes. You had light tanks that are fast, that they're mobile. They have relatively high-ish DPM, but they have no armor. That's why they're so fast in mobile. You then have the heavy tank, which has got lots of armor. It's got low DPM, but it dishes out a lot of damage and it's relatively slow. You then have the TD, which has zero armor most of the time, massive derp. I mean, these things have the tendency to do lots of damage, but the guns aren't overly that overly accurate and their mobility isn't that great. 
And then you have a medium tank. And the medium tank is like a mix between a heavy and a light. It has not as good mobility as a light, but better than a heavy. Better armor than a light, but not as good as the heavy. And media, a sort of a, a medium DPM damage output. And that was basically the way it worked. However, and I'm not just raging on missiles here. This tank that you're seeing now, the T-92, threw all that out the window. This is a light tank. It has light tank camo. It has light tank maneuverability. Okay, it doesn't have massive DPM, but it has the gun of a TD and the armor of a heavy. You can say, ah, but Fuji, it's got a long reload. You know what? It's reload ain't that much longer than that Camp 70, which is a heavy tank. But you know what? It dishes out more damage than that Camp 70. And don't get hung up on DPM. DPM is the best that the tank will ever do if it hits its target and it rolls high alpha every time. And hardly anybody will do the DPM of the tank. What this tank does, however, it gives you the derp of a TD. It gives you the armor of a heavy. It gives you the mobility of a light. And it doesn't have any of the disadvantages, realistically. Biggest disadvantage is its long load time. And that's it. I mean, why on earth would you not like this tank? I mean, it's got everything going for it. I mean, that's a mouse this tank is about to attack. A mouse. Now, the mouse is a super heavy, got the most hit points in the game. Um, and, you know, it bounces a lot because it's a super heavy. Watch this. 574 straight out the bat. This is a tier 9 light against a tier 10 super heavy. That mouse will knock out 460 high end alpha. This thing will knock out a shed load more than that. Watch. Just keep watching. And this is what is wrong with this tank. Another 513. That's a thousand damage in two shells. The mouse has got no hope and house chance of dishing out that much damage that quickly. It, it just hasn't. So, and watch, wait, here we go again. Here we go. Boom. 700. That's a light tank. Light tank should not be knocking out 700 on its standard APCR ammunition. It's ridiculous. Anyway, that was a replay by a good friend of mine. Every good reroll is TT of the clan. Every. He had a fantastic game. It's a really well deserved mastery. And I love the game. It's brilliant. He plays the tank really well. But that's not the point. The point is, it's a light tank. That tank is not meant to be able to do that. And by the way, before you all start moaning, that was after the update. After the nerf. So that's it being nerfed. Now this is rolling, rolling out in a Sheridan. And what he can do with the Sheridan, and he's, he's not a fan of these tanks. And, you know, he sent me this clip for a reason. Because what this tank can do is just ridiculous in the current meta. And as I say, 99.6% of all the tanks out there have to break cover. They have to point their gun at the target, at the enemy. They have to find that weak spot. They have to wait for the aiming reticle to come down and then they shoot. This tank can dispense with that. It doesn't need to do that. So the level playing field has gone. Now I'll give you an example. Two days ago, I rolled out a 215B on Rockfield. And we had one tank left to kill and it was, I thought it was myself and a Doom Turtle on my team and there was one tank left on the opposite team and it was a Sheridan. So we're not going to be able to run around, I mean the Doom Turtle is not going to be able to chase a Sheridan anywhere. I'm not going to be able to catch him up. So we did the next best thing, we capped. And I put myself in a position where it was pretty difficult to reset the cap. Lo and behold, the Sheridan went onto the sea cap. It wasn't a supremacy game but you know where the sea cap is, he went onto the sea cap and he just lobbed missiles. Hit the Doom Turtle. But that's hardly surprising. The Doom Turtle was a pretty big tank. And you can't really miss it when you're lobbing missiles on top of it. He then lobbed a missile at me. And it bounced. Because I, I was in a good position. He then lobbed another missile at me. And reset the cap. 
I didn't see him. He has no line of sight on me. He was able to reset the cap in a way that I couldn't, in a way that we had no chance. That is an unfair advantage. That game should have been a win. If it wasn't for the fact that it was a Sheridan with missiles, that game wouldn't have been a loss. He would not have won that game. In fact, he didn't win it, it was a draw. But that's the point. The unfair advantage of being sitting right at the back of the sea cap, where nobody can see you, flinging missiles over the top to reset the base, it's just, it's filthy. It's just not in the spirit of the game. And this is the point of the missiles, guys. Look at this. Here, Rowling is in a position whereby that 215B driven by Elysium, good player by the way, the, the clan leader of Vale, and the Mark VI have no shots on him. Obviously, if, if he does this, they will get shots on him. But they have no shots on him when he goes back. So when he goes back to this little dippy thing, they have no chance whatsoever in hitting him. None. They haven't got a hope to have chance. Rolling is not even aiming at the tank here. Look at where his reticle is. He's now going to put it on. Look at where his gun is aiming. 499 into the Mark VI. Mark VI hasn't got a hope in house chance. He cannot return fire. He can't do anything. Not a thing. What can he do? Rolling is, is not even aiming at the tank, really. He, all he's doing is put the aiming circle on it. Look what the gun is. The gun's not aiming at the tank. Look. When he uses APCR in the standard aim, he can't get an aim. When he puts it into missile, miss, look, look. Ridiculous, eh? And that is the problem with ATGMs. Now, I'm not saying that everybody can do that, but it's not the point. The point is, you have two tanks out of 423 that has that ability. And they shouldn't have that ability. It's wrong. It's just wrong. It is not a level playing field. And I'll just prove the point one more time with rolling. There's an object, 263. Well, first, he's, I think he's going to go for the uh, the Death Star. Or is it the No, he's going to go for the. Look at this. The 263 hasn't got to open. That's right, it's behind a rock. 546. How is that fair? How is that conduitive to a level playing field in the game? It's not. And that's why I am a strong believer that they've got to change the parameters. The T92 still needs to be nerfed. I mean, it's got everything going for it and nothing against it. And the missiles are just wrong. Absolutely wrong. Because if you can do this when the other side can't, that gives you an advantage. It ceases to be a level playing field and that makes it unfair. Simple as that. Now, you may agree with me, you may disagree with me. It's, it's irrelevant because 99.6% of the tanks in the game have to break cover, aim on the other tank, wait for the reticle to come down, aim for the weak spot, and then fire. This thing doesn't. Two tanks don't out of 423. And if you think that's a good, good percentage, then wow. All I can say is, you're that person who just likes driving Sheridans and T-92s. Because they have no place in the game with those missiles. None. Period. Full stop. It's not a debate, realistically. And all you guys thinking that, you know, ah, oh, it's a storm in a teacup, that they're okay, they're easily countered, etc, etc. No, they're not. Because they can, you know, you can sit behind a rock or behind a ridge without having to aim at the enemy and cause either damage or reset caps. I mean, what is all that about? That, that makes the game uneven, imbalanced. And if you think that the game is balanced and that the ATGMs bring balance, then I'm sorry guys, you're not right. You're just not right. Regardless of how much you like the tanks, regardless of how much you think they're OP, regardless of why you love it, missiles flinging all over the map. And I know people love flinging missiles all over the map, and that's not the argument here. I'm not saying they're not fun. I'm not saying they're not broken. I'm not saying, you know, but all those people who love them, love them because of the disadvantage they present to the other team without them. 
Because I guarantee you this, when you get smacked by a missile, you are one of those people to say, stupid Sheridan, stupid T-92, ban the missiles. But when you're the person firing the missiles and smacking, it, you don't care. And you saw in the, in the last replay, that Mark VI was very upset. And why wouldn't he be? He hasn't got any defense against it. None. Not a bit. And you could all say, ah, oh, but he should have rushed him. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what you do, is it, when you're a good player? You just yolo in. You lose, lose 500 hit points because he'll just switch it to APCR and smack you. Come on, be realistic here. It's time to know the truth, guys. And the truth is this. Missiles do not belong in the game, in the current format. Change them. And I'm not saying get rid of them completely. I'm not saying get rid of the tanks. I'm not saying nerf them. I'm saying change the way the missile mechanic works. Make it line of sight. Don't make it fire and forget. That's, that's ridiculous. You know, even in the real world, no military vehicle has such a weapon as its main armament on a tank. I'm sorry, they don't. They do not. So why should we have it in the game? I know it's not a tank sim, but that's not the point. And the reason I put in the clip there of me playing Uprising is because that, with the current meta, is really where the Sheridan and the T-92 belong. In an arcade game mode, where it's just for fun, and it's just a bit of a laugh. Not in the game modes that people take seriously. I mean, it's, it's, it's stupid. Absolutely stupid. I mean, how can I, how can I persuade you otherwise? Well, it's like me turning around to you and saying, let's do a race in our cars. What have you got? Oh, you've got a Robin Reliant three-wheeler. Well, that's okay, because I, all I've got is a Ferrari California. So you'll be, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. There's no disadvantage. It's a level playing field. <laughs> You'd laugh at me and say, no, it ain't. And that's the thing with these tanks. No, it ain't. This is not a level playing field. So wargaming, a couple of things that we need to look at. One, the T-92. The T-92 is not just about missiles. I mean, it's broken on so many different levels, guys. So many different levels. I keep telling you, I don't want to know what the disadvantages are in the T-92. TD, TD Derp. This is a light tank, by the way. Small, robust light tank. Runs around about people like a crazy thing. Knocks out 700 damage, as you saw in the mouse video. <laughs> it resets his camera every, you know, it's got a camera profile of a light. Does 70 kilometers an hour. And it bounces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will bounce stuff because it's got spaced armor. It will bounce HE. Tell me another light other than these two missile tanks. Tell me another light tank that doesn't like HE. I mean, you put a good HE round into a bat chat, it's gone from a TD. You put a good HE round into any light tank, or, or for that matter, certain mediums like the Leo 1 or the PTA or the Bulldog, blah, blah, blah. You put an HE round into these tanks, they've gone. Or at least, at least half the hit points are gone. You stick a HE round into these, yeah, well, good luck with that. You'll do splash damage. Why? Because there's spaced armor. And you'll bounce. You will bounce off the front of a T92. Even though, even though they've nerfed it, you will still not knock it for six with a HE round. You may pen it now with your APCR. But you know what? Let's have a look at tier nine. I'm in my count 70, which has got a 14 on second reload. You're on your T92, which has the mobility of a T92, of a, of a light tank. You can circle me to death. Yeah, you may have a 16 second reload, but you know what? You're dishing out more derp than me. My turret ain't gonna be, in my turning circle, in my turret cannot match you circling me to death. How does that work? Now, if you gave me half a chance to get a shot in, then that'd be a different kettle of fish, but you're not even giving me half a chance because you've got mobility against me and your rounds will go through my armor. Hardly fair, eh? But anyway, that's been my video. I've been Fuji. And it's about time we learned the truth about ATGMs because they are not what you think they are. 
And everybody's arguing that, oh, they're okay, they're easy to counter, they're this, they're that. No, they're not. They're actually very broken. And they actually bring a level to the game that is both toxic, because players who are being smacked by 80 gems don't like it. They're bringing a level to the game where people are avoiding going out in certain tiers to avoid them. And they're just breaking the game, unbelievably so. Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujit. That's been my video. By all means, comment, like, even share it. Get over to Wargaming's Discord. Carry out the survey. Do it. Tell them the truth. Tell them how you feel. But above all, if you've got any decent replays, send them to me. Subscribe to me. And stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield. Missile tanks notwithstanding. And happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about. It's, it's about having fun and being happy. But it's having fun and being happy for everybody, not just those who drive missile tanks.